Hi, my name is Ken Schwartz of Precise Sharpening and what I'm going to introduce today is the 320 grit 320 grit Nubatama from the bamboo series of stones. Uh, as you can see it's a very simple white looking stone. Uh, some of the knives that I'm going to be sharpening are going to be this Kikuichi knife uh, Yanagi. I'm also going to be using a, a Moritaka. It's a small little Macari. Uh, I find it quite useful for things like uh, dicing garlic and small little vegetables. It also works very well as a knife similar to what's called a producer's knife that uh, vegetable vendors use for slicing off samples of vegetables to their customers. Uh, so anyhow, uh, let's test this stone out a little bit together and see what we think of it. So just a little bit of splash and we'll see. It absorbs it fairly quickly. So let's give it a little bit more of a spray. And yeah, this will deserve a little bit of a squirt, a little bit of soaking. So let's see how it absorbs a bit more water. Still fairly quickly. Uh, so let's give it a little bit of a rinse. And let's see. Uh, I may, if I have some time on this video, also continue with this uh, Sugimoto uh, carbon steel, it's a white steel cleaver. Uh, also a short blade. And Let's see, uh, let's see how we're doing here. Uh, okay, so it's beginning to saturate. Uh, I think we can kind of go from here to doing some splash and go work. Uh, all right, so let's start this off. This is a sort of zero grind type knife. In other words, it doesn't have a separate distinct bevel. Kiruichi finish. Uh, interesting thing about the Moritakas is that the handle area is a different steel to keep from uh, having rust form inside the tang. So let's get some initial impressions. Okay, so we are getting nice strong abrasive sound it's beginning to absorb some of the water that we put on there uh, let's give it a little splash and see how well it takes a second squirting of water again concentrating along the edges of the blade so that the edge of the edge makes good contact with the stone. I might add also that sometimes you can vary the performance of the stone by how you soak it, uh, the amount of pressure that you put on it, and so forth. So you really do have a large measure of control in terms of how you use a stone. Uh, this is true whether you're freehand sharpening or as, as we'll have in a, in a future video and release, uh, if these stones are cut for precision devices such as the Edge Pro, uh, you also can affect the performance of the stone by the pressure that you apply and the way that you use the stone. Uh, just as a, as a point. Okay, so I'm feeling it's beginning to grab a little bit more towards the edge. Uh, getting very nice performance out of this stone. Uh, seeing very little mud. Uh, still a nice aggressive feel. I'm seeing the occasional bubbling. It's not to burr or something like that, but it's some bubbling of air coming up through the water in the stone, if you happen to notice that. So, let's see. We're getting pretty shiny finish on this. 
Let's do the other side a little bit. So this is a, a blue steel as opposed to the white steel. Uh, it's a slightly different composition. Uh, the white and blue steels are from Hitachi, uh, a steel manufacturer in Japan. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're getting a slight bit of water absorption. Uh, so a minute or two soaking on this would certainly be appropriate. Getting a very nice sharp edge. Yeah, the white steel is a more pure, straight carbon steel, whereas the Aogami Super and the regular blue steels uh, have a few more additives, not very much comparatively. Uh, gives it a little bit more edge durability, but sacrifices a little bit of the ultimate level of sharpening performance you might be able to get. Um, it's a very subtle distinction. Uh, most people in practice will hardly notice any difference whatsoever between the two. Nice stone. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I might add it's also it's important when doing some videos that the stone is held in place firmly and securely. It also allows a little more precision in your knife sharpening. Uh, unfortunately, the angle device that I used in an earlier video had a little less precision than I would like and was wobbling, but I think it's important to have your stone stay in place during a video. Uh, the extra noise is very distracting. Uh, so let's run this a little bit and just let you listen to the stone rather than listening to it over my talking for a minute. You can hear the sound of the stone smoothing out just a little bit as it gets more saturated. Uh, again, when you're listening to different videos, you may hear a slight difference in sound from the saturation, from the amount of mud formation on it, and so forth. Uh, nice, very nice. Let me give this a quick rinse. Take a little closer look at it. So we get a fairly shiny finish. Let's see how it cuts easily. Uh, we'll do a paper slice. Easy. Easy. Uh, puts out a very nice edge. Uh, very impressive stone. I'm enjoying it. Uh, get one and you'll enjoy it too. Uh, let's go on to one more while we're at it. And 
do this particular one. It's that white steel. And as much as anything else, we'll hear both a sound and a performance difference as the stone gets a little more hydrated. Here it's a softer sound than it was initially. Yeah, this is sort of the baby version of the other Sugimoto cleavers. Same steel, same construction, uh, just a, a shorter height. Let's give it a nice rinse just for the moment, just to see how well it holds on to the metal swarf. Okay, and so it does seem to hold on to it fairly well. Uh, sometimes, more so with coarser grit stones, you can take a little brush and scrub it to reduce some of that swarf. And ultimately, you can either lap the stone or uh, use a mild abrasive stone uh, for something like this. I would use something like a 1200 Atoma to take a little of that off, but at this point it's a very light amount of swarf and doesn't interfere at all in the performance of the stone. For a coarse stone, uh, it's a, a very low amount of mud, doesn't dish. Uh, I think I, at least for the carbon steel knife, it seems hard to say until I've tried some more knives, but I would say that this works very well. Uh, might even be working a tad better than the 400 stone that I did earlier today in the Noob Thomas series. Uh, let's see. Okay, very clean cut on that. Uh, paper slicing. Easy, easy. Push cuts, extremely easy. It's good stone. Uh, for a 325 or 320 grit stone, this produces an exceptionally nice edge. Uh, thank you for your time. Enjoy demonstrating this stone and hope you get a chance to pick one up and demonstrate it yourself. Take care. Bye-bye.